the first point I'd say is just <clears throat> very much around this issue of the dealer's high acquisition costs and the dealer's inability today to actually know more about the customer that he's dealing with. So our strategy is very specific to play further up in the value chain versus down. So typically what you find in a dealer environment, a customer shows intent, they click on a lead, they show interest in a vehicle, the dealer gets no other information about the customer other than their name, surname, cell number, email address, and a tick box that says, I'm interested in this particular vehicle. Now, you've got to put yourself in the shoes of the dealer. That comes in at high volumes today because for multiple sources and high volumes, and again, a dealer's core business is to sell cars. So they will contact every single one of those people, hopefully in a time frame that suits that customer, and then they work every customer exactly in the same fashion or way. They try to understand you know, what the customer's need is, they will understand what the customer's trade-in vehicle is, um, understand a little bit more of the customer, and if it progresses further, we'll obviously then start the finance application process. It's only when the, the data or the response from the bank comes back does a dealer actually probably for the first time understand that this is a customer that can actually not qualify or get finance. Now, if you think of the effort that's gone in through that process, would that conversion ratio, if we were sitting in an environment where you know, 20% were getting declined and 80% were being approved, it's a non-issue. There is no business case actually to, to really you know, change anything. We're sitting in the opposite uh, you know, side of the spectrum. The, the, uh, what we do today and one of the capabilities we offer is a, a, almost early identification, qualification, and verification of that customer at point of lead. So before they progress through that value chain, we equip a dealer to understand everything that he needs to know at that point in time about that individual, potential risk or fraud, and it can come through in a number of different ways, but it does, does occur early upstream. And then can this customer qualify, not just for vehicle finance, but possibly any other product? So the, the reality is, for the market to, to lift their numbers in sales and revenue, et cetera, you don't necessarily have to get more people in the top of the funnel or more customers or more potential customers. The volume that comes in, in my view, is enough. The products available in terms of the facilities that a consumer can get into to own a vehicle, that's where the issue is. And that hasn't changed in the market for 20 years, now starting to evolve, though, right, into subscription-based services, so what would be termed as mobility as a service. So just because a customer or a consumer cannot get vehicle finance, it doesn't mean that they're not a customer for a different type of product, which would be a long-term rental, a, um, a subscription-based uh, type of product, a lease type of an agreement, and some of the early enrichment or qualification that we can do is to understand that yes, a consumer upfront cannot qualify for finance, but you don't have to disregard them totally out of the value chain because they can be considered for an alternate product. And over time, what we see is that that fills some of the gap for dealers in terms of sales. But equally, if you put yourself in the, in the shoes of the consumer, that's some of where the real benefit comes, right? Typically what happens in the market today is that you get offered an alternate product after you decline. So you go through the entire process of being excited and you know all of the instant gratification, test driving the vehicle, getting all of your documents together, filling out the finance application, and it's only after you decline, somebody might contact you and say, we know you can't get typical vehicle finance, but here's an alternate product, right? So we're trying to change also the consumer experience by, by enabling the dealer to qualify those customers better. The second is very much around fraud. You would expect that levels of fraud would have decreased over time as we've digitized more and data has become more widely available. The, the unfortunate reality is that's not the case. Um, so we're able to detect a number of different things on a consumer and a vehicle potentially right up front before that customer or that vehicle even arrives at a dealership floor. So digitally, we're able to assess that using different technologies and different data sets. But the power of that is then you can easily start to segment and profile and filter out who should you contact quickest and who should you actually avoid. Although we target the dealer to use the service, the consumer is an end beneficiary, if you think of the full value chain, anything that we saw for upstream at the first point of contact, the bank uh, or a lender is the beneficiary of that because they get 
they don't get a fraudulent deal, which is also, you know, which is also apparent and occurs downstream at a finance level. And ins a, an insurer that's potentially insuring that car equally doesn't get a fraudulent deal, a car that, sh you know, they're insuring that actually was written off uh, two years ago, or a vehicle that's potentially stolen, maybe more apparent in the finance space, but potentially you could insure a vehicle that was that was stolen or being sought for, or cloned vehicle, et cetera. It, do, it does happen in the industry, right? And then obviously once that legitimate customer and vehicle goes through the process, it legitimizes everything around it, and the reality is what we're trying to drive is that this can be done more proactively and can be done further upstream before you take on the resource and, and get to the resource-intensive process of actually physically assessing the car, assessing the customer, filling out the finance. If it's fraud, it's fraud. It kicks out uh, right up front. And then obviously, we also assist uh, the industry around some of the regulatory requirements. So, you know, as part of uh, the FIC legislation, all dealers are accountable institutions, and we assist them in making sure that they're compliant with any regulatory body, et cetera. And we do it again uh, up front in the process. Obviously, what Credo brings to the party is a unified single view. Um, and I would um, argue, just because I haven't seen it uh, in the market, that we're probably the only provider right now in the market that can give you a single view of the customer and the vehicle potentially being traded in, and the customer across multiple different uh, sort of lenses. So credit worthiness, uh, can you satisfy the FIC requirement, the, the FICA and KYC, so is the person who they say they are, all the documentation, et cetera, all of that encompass in a single comprehensive output or report. And alongside it, all of the data information around the vehicle that the client is potentially trading in. Is it currently stolen and being sought for? Has it been involved in previous accidents um, or accident claims? Is it been potentially a vehicle that was written off? Uh, does the VIN and engine actually match? Is, is, it, is it the actual car that was built by the manufacturer? Uh, does the color equal you know, the vehicle in question? The, the actual car might be black that is built. The one you're looking at is white. It's potentially a cloned vehicle or the NATO's document has been you know, jippered or, or, or something. So that's probably what's in the market right now through us is the most comprehensive view for a dealer around the customer and the intersection, well, almost the intersection of the customer and the car, which is not actually readily available.